So welcome back to system security. This is just a reminder that you need to complete the final attempt of the module one assessment. If you've already submitted a reconciliation, you can still access it to refresh, brush up on any gaps and concepts or uh, any of the material where you uh, made mistakes on the first attempt of the assessment last month or at the beginning of February. And um, after you brush up with the reconciliation, uh, you should log your final attempt of the module one assessment at, uh, before Saturday tomorrow ends. That means 11.59 PM tomorrow, you need to log your final attempt of the module one uh, assessment. And then in module two, you wanna get started over the weekend, uh, we are close to finalizing the study guide. And what we'll do is finish our review of content early next week, and then engage our assessment for module two, so that as the week comes to a close, you'll have the solution finished. And uh, if you have not completed the export import application data assignment, that's the first submission you need for this module. And then today we're going to talk about installing and configuring DNS on the local level. So you have an opportunity and in our last class, we explained that you can configure DNS locally to provide some redundancy, some failover, some resilience some control over your local services. The whole focus of our module is how to harden our software, our services, and our hardware. So whether it's physical or it's applications or it's uh, running processes that provide resources, named resources on a network, uh, there are things that you need to know and understand about securing services on a practical level. When we finish uh, this module, one last thing we'll review uh, is the software piece. We'll be talking about the software piece, and then we'll revisit some things about web and DNS uh, at the very end. Does anyone have any questions before we start with um, our, our review of the solution? Okay. So uh, give me one second here. There we go. The solution for module two uh, includes quick setup of a virtual machine. So one of the things we hope to accomplish is, is for you to see just how powerful and easy it is to set up a virtual machine to perform uh, a task or to uh, provide resources on your local network. We've been talking about how critical DNS is. And so uh, one of the things that we want to do is to give you the opportunity firsthand to create a presence of your own DNS in your home network. The simplest way to do this is in VirtualBox. So what we want you to do is to complete each of these three tasks for your solution. If you're in some of the other computer science courses this spring with me in other classes, your virtual machine may already be built. And if it is, you can use the virtual machine that is already built for this purpose as well. But if you haven't built a, a virtual machine on your laptop or your PC, you're missing out. So, I'm gonna walk through each of these steps. The important thing to remember is that as you perform the steps for each task, 
you want to submit screenshots of the completed steps that we talk about or specify in each task. Okay. So let's talk about the first task. We're going to configure a Microsoft Server 2022 virtual machine on your laptop or desktop by downloading VirtualBox and an ISO, uh, an ISO installation file from the Microsoft downloads in the My, My Campus portal. Okay. So I will have a link for a YouTube video. And you can use the link for the YouTube video. And uh, that way, you'll have a chance to um, download the software and, and you can follow the YouTube video step by step. So I'll, I'll add a link for that. Um, I know that's not active yet, but it says you can follow this YouTube. And uh, as soon as I'm done uh, explaining the process, I'll put the link in there and it shows you how to build your virtual machine with VirtualBox. So to go to VirtualBox, let's take each step one at a time. To go to VirtualBox, all you need to do is, well, you're gonna need some, some uh, hard disk space on your laptop or your PC, but you don't need a whole lot. Most laptops and PCs have plenty of extra space on their uh, drive. And so what you wanna do is you wanna check to see, first of all, when you select this PC, you want to see that you have probably uh, at, 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 at the least, you wanna have about 50 gigabytes of space on your laptop or your PC. So you see here, I have 654 gigabytes. Uh, you'll need five zero gigabytes or more, but you can make do with 50. And so that's the first step is to make sure you have enough space. When you follow the YouTube video to uh, set up the virtual box uh, system with the Microsoft server install media, uh, one of the things that you're going to want to do is configure the network card in bridged mode. So if you have confirmed that you have enough file space, you're going to open up a browser. We'll do this in Chrome. And we'll first go to virtualbox.org. And, uh, and you'll go ahead and click and download the Windows host or the Mac software. And uh, there is a new version now for new MacBook Pros that have the new M1 or M2 chip. If you're running a Linux machine, you can also download a version of VirtualBox in Linux. The important thing to understand is that after you download this, you also wanna download the extension pack by clicking this single link. And this download will load the extensions for VirtualBox, regardless of which environment you're, you're in, whether you're in Windows or on a Mac or, or in Linux, right? So just remember, you also wanna include this file. After VirtualBox is installed, you'll have an empty screen that won't have anything here, but it'll look like this. And it might not be as big, so let's see if we can shrink this down. Um, you won't see any machines listed on the left, but you'll see uh, these options and the tools, and then you'll see some the same icons here. And that's how you'll know your virtual box is ready. You'll follow the steps in the YouTube video to use the download to set up your server. And I have a server here that's already running already running on the screen. This is my VirtualBox server that's running on my laptop right now. My laptop provides a certain amount of resources 
for the server. And if I click on the settings and look at system, I happen to be using six gigabytes, but you can get away with as few as four gigabytes. Uh, and as we said before, for storage, you can have uh, 40 or 50 gigabytes of hard disk space to, to store this. When you're setting up the network, you wanna select this option for network and it's probably going to be set to NAT. But what you want to do is hit the pull down and select bridged. And that's what you do before you uh, click OK. Now, uh, one other finer point is that you're gonna take the Windows Server Media and in the storage option, you're going to click on the empty DVD tray and you're going to click on the disk icon over here. And when you do, you're gonna choose the ISO that you downloaded in your downloads folder. That's where you're gonna choose your Microsoft server download uh, from the My Campus portal. As soon as that's in there, you'll notice that uh, my system order shows hard disk first, but most new machines in VirtualBox will boot from the, they'll start up from the optical drive first. And as long as you make that change in storage for the disk tray, it'll see the ISO and then you'll have a chance to install it to your, your uh, machine. Any questions? In my campus portal, Each of you have access to the Microsoft uh, server install media. Uh, so if you scroll down here to the Microsoft software download, it may ask you to sign in again. And if it asks you which email to use, you should type in your UVI email address, just like it's shown here. I'm gonna type this in you would type in yours, the only difference being yours would say students.uvi.edu, where mine says uvi.edu. You'll click next, and then it'll take you to another screen. You'll say, don't show this again. You always want to answer no. It may pull up the same My Campus Portal login that you do when you're logging into the My Campus Portal. Just enter your password with your 900 number, your 9,000 number, your student ID again. Once you're in the portal, you're going to select software and you will scroll down until you see server 2022 standard. When you click on this, a window will appear and you'll need the key. So you wanna view the key. I'm not gonna click it because I don't want my, my software key to be shown on this video. The hackers would love that, but yeah. Um, when you click this, it'll display and you can copy and paste it into a text file for use later, but then you also click the download button. When you click download, it'll download a five gigabyte ISO file. That same ISO file will allow you to install other versions of Windows Server. Um, so you'll need a high speed internet connection and uh, with a halfway decent connection, it would take an hour or less. That is the ISO. So if I go here to look at it to see what what's actually downloading it's this file it should read en for english us windows server 2022 x64 that's the 64-bit version the dvd image and then it has this uh, serial number but it ends in dot iso that's the file from the downloads folder you point to inside virtualbox 
in here in storage once it's downloaded. So I would go to my downloads folder and I would see it inside there. Now, it, in my case, it's still loading. Any questions about this first part? So what is it you have to turn in for your submission? You're going to want to show your ISO from the Microsoft downloads on the screen from the My Campus portal. You need to capture a screenshot of that while it's downloaded. Then you want to show the virtual box environment set up. Take a screenshot of that. And they don't have to be in that order. If you happen to install VirtualBox first, capture a screen of your open VirtualBox. Um, after you're done with that and you walk through the video, if you set up your network interface or the network interface card, the ethernet card, using the network option here in settings here, you can select attach to, and instead of saying that, it's gonna be bridged adapter. You can take this screenshot and submit. And uh, ultimately what you wanna do is you wanna show this thing running. So the last part of this is to show this screen here. When your virtual machine is installed in VirtualBox and it's running and you sign on for the first time, you'll see this screen. And uh, this is the screen you want to capture to complete task one. So now you have a working virtual machine on your system. Are there any questions about what we've shown here. All right, so step two, you're gonna follow the steps shown in this video in class. Uh, I'll put another link here. So, so this will be lit up so you can just click on it where it says in class on 24 February. And when you click it, this video will fast forward to the point where we're showing these next steps. So you don't have to watch the whole video or figure out where it is, right? We're gonna add the DNS server role and configure the role using the root hints option. That's what I'm about to demonstrate. So task two, is something that happens once you have a server that's running. Now I've already done this with my local server. Um, I've already done this with the virtual machine that I created on my laptop. So I can't really demonstrate it again, but I have another machine I'm gonna use to show you how that works here. And uh, I'm gonna switch to that right now. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna blow the screen up and uh, can everyone still see the screen? Yes. Okay. Give me one second. So this is a window that will look much like the one you'll have when you're finished installing the server 2022 as a virtual machine on your laptop or on your PC. And usually when you log in, this is the screen that greets you. 
It's called the server manager dashboard. And in order to set up the DNS role, all you need to do on your server is to click add roles and features. After you click add roles and features, you're going to advance uh, through most of the default options here. So I'm just gonna click next, next. Yes, this is uh, the machine I'm using now, uh, but your machine name will be different. And you may have a different IP address, but you're gonna click next. And then you're going to select where it says DNS. Let me show that again. DNS is here and I'm going to select it. And right away a pop-up window appears and it says, uh, we have to install these, these tools in order to work with your DNS. Can I include these tools? That's why that's checked automatically. You're gonna say add features. And now the DNS server option is selected. You'll, you'll click next. And then next again, and then next again. You want to you want to select this box as well. Restart the destination server automatically if required. You'll say yes, and then install. It does not take long for the DNS server role to be added to Microsoft Server. So you can think of a Microsoft server as a Swiss army knife with many different tools and roles. They're called roles. The same installation of Microsoft server will allow you to host websites, uh, operate DNS, share files, can manage print jobs, it can stream media, it can it can do a, a whole series of, of, of different things. All right, so it says installation succeeded. That's what it'll say, except it'll state your name, your system, the name of your virtual system here. You'll click close. And then now I can minimize this screen, go to my start menu, Go to Windows, Administrative Tools. And when I see DNS, I want to right click it and pin it to start so that DNS is shown on your start menu. Then you right click it with your right mouse button, slide down to more, and then run as administrator. Are there any questions about what I've shared so far? No. The name of your virtual machine, the name you gave your server will show here. Now, what happens if you have a bunch of gibberish on your screen here? Uh, what you'd probably want to do is open up your server manager again select local server and then where it shows the gibberish from your computer name you'll want to click on it and that will open up this option to change your computer name when you don't put you don't put the new computer name here that's just a description field you want to click the change option and then replace the gibberish name when i say gibberish i mean randomly assigned, there's all sorts of numbers and letters. It's kind of a train wreck. You, you'll look at the computer name and you'll say, what is that? that? That just isn't a sensible name. It's good before you actually configure DNS and add the role to change the name in the first place. I'll say that again. It's considered a, a better way of doing things to uh, basically to take care of that up front. Before you add DNS. So if I go back to here, 
And now I look, I can see DNS is listed here and it's listed here. That means my DNS is installed and it's running. And that's how you know it's okay to open up the DNS manager from your start menu. So once it's there, you wanna select the name of your server. And what you'll do is you'll right click, you'll right click the name of your server and it, you'll select configure a DNS server. This will open the DNS server wizard. And what you'll do at this point is click next. And instead of creating lookup zones for advertising, you're going to enable your DNS server to function as a, a resolver, a DNS resolution system. So when people are looking up stuff on the internet, they're getting it from your virtual machine. To do that, you select configure root hints only. You'll select next and then finish. And you're ready for task three. Um, I'm gonna ask a small favor. I need to get up and stretch a moment. Let's all do that at the same time, okay? We'll be back on screen in 60 seconds. One of the things you wanna do when you're finished creating your DNS server, and here you see the name of my server is Virgo. You can select the server name. And if you take your right mouse button, one thing you want to do is you want to clear the cache and then you want to select the name again and use your right mouse button. It's always a good idea just to restart the service. And that means that your DNS is ready to go. But as long as I see your, the name of your virtual machine, from task one, I got the name of your virtual machine with the screenshots. And I'll see the same name here with the MMC, uh, the, the management console. And it's this screen that you need to capture to document you've completed task two. It's also a very good idea to open up your network connection by clicking on the network icon and then clicking network and then going to change adapter options. And then you double click on this thing and you wanna show the details. You want to click on this so that you know the IP address of your DNS machine on your home network. So, you'll have your, your, your virtual machine name here in the DNS management window, but then you'll also have this screen up showing the IP address because that's gonna be needed for the last task. So at this point, you would capture a screenshot and submit for task two. And that's how you would log credit for task two. I'm gonna, Go ahead and minimize this screen for now. And what you'll see is that I've already configured my local machine with DNS. So if I look at it and I right click it and run it as an administrator, this is my virtual machine that's running inside my laptop that I installed with VirtualBox. So if I do the same thing on my network, I go to this and select the, the um, network and internet settings. And then change the adapter. So some of the, some of the screen options look a little different. I'm gonna double click on this 
and the name, the number of my DNS server running right now on my virtual machine is 192.168.1.6. Help, help me remember dot six, everyone, dot six. We still together? You, everybody still there? Yes. Okay. Yes. So now I have DNS running on my local laptop or my local uh, PC. And what I want to do now for my last part of the task is I want to configure my host machine, my laptop, or my PC to use the IP address of the virtual machine for DNS. Now remember the example I just showed you was dot six. So you wanna clear the local DNS cache and then access resources. So there's, there's three pieces or three steps to this final task. The first is to configure the local system to use the IP address. So on my host machine, on my laptop or PC, I'm gonna open up my control panel and go into my network and sharing center and open up change adapter settings. And I'm gonna double click on the active adapter that's connected to the internet. I'll select properties. If I have IPv6 enabled and checked, I will uncheck it but I'll double click on the one that says IPv4 on the name, not the checkbox. So IPv6 will be unchecked and you'll select this one and then double click it and that'll open up this option. Normally it's set to this. What you're going to do is select this radio button and then you'll say, use the following DNS server and address. 192.168.1.6. That's what you'll do. And you can go into advanced and then see if there's anything else listed, but basically you want just this address listed. This is one of the screenshots you need to show for the last task. I need to know that my virtual machine that's running DNS, its IP address, and, and yours may be different. Yours may not be dot six. It might be dot 23, it might be dot four, could be anything, but you get that from the virtual machine when you look up that network address and then on your host, you open up your network configuration and you make sure you type that same server address in here. Take a screenshot of this. That's part of your step three submission, right? That's part of part three. Now we also need to clear the, the cache. So after I do this, I'm going to say OK and OK and close. After I do this, I have to clear the local DNS cache. I'm going to open this up and I'll use this command, ipconfig space forward slash flush DNS, all one word. When I hit enter, it'll say you've successfully flushed the DNS resolver cache. If you don't do that, what will happen is that your laptop or PC will get confused. It'll start pulling old copies of the, the websites that you were accessing and you don't want to do that. So I'll repeat this command and hit enter because I'm doing this live and I just changed my DNS entry. And it's that screen right here, once again, uh, let's see if we can. It's this screen that you want to include for the, the second artifact, the second detail of task three. 
The last one is to go ahead and access resources online. Now that might not seem like a big deal, but if I've done all this correctly, when I open a web browser, I will get, I will be able to browse the web. So if I open up the web and uh, I go to, let's, let's use a, a domain name that we haven't been using. Anyone? We used Facebook before. Let's use a different one. Somebody give me a domain name to use. Amazon.com. Amazon.com is a good one. If my DNS is working correctly, I get a splash screen for Amazon.com. If it's not working correctly, I won't be able to get it. I'll show you what I was demonstrating before just so everybody understands. I'm going to clear my browsing data for all of time. And I'm going to select the advanced option instead of the basic. And I'm going to check all the boxes. And I'll say clear data. And then I'll close my browser. And now what I'll do is I'll make one change. I'm going to go back, not to my server, but to my own network configuration. I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to say, use this DNS server, but I'm going to put, um, I'll put something else in here. I'll just blank out the name. Uh, I'll say, okay. Notice it doesn't fuss at me. I have, I say, well, it says obtain a DNS server automatically. Um, I need to put in a bogus address. So I'll use my laptop's IP address. If I put in nothing, it defaults to the automatic. Hey, look this up automatically. I, I don't want it to. Actually, I, I think before what I did was I stopped the DNS service. Didn't I do that? 192.168. Dot one dot six. So this is a better way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and say OK and then close. And then on my server, I'm going to select my server and I'm going to stop the service. Now DNS is not running. How do I know? If I go into here and I look, you see that this is grayed out. Stop, pause, resume, and restart. It don't exist because it's not running. The only thing that I can select is start. So that's how I know I've successfully cut off my DNS service, right? If you wanna make sure that your laptop is actually using your own virtual machine for DNS, that's what you can do. And then because it's in your network configuration, you go back to a browser again. And right away, we're having problems getting into Google. I'm going to hit the stop button. Uh, it was Amazon, right? Well, that's not working either. Why? I stopped the service. Now it says it was able to find it, but the point is, is that DNS isn't working right. Now that I've stopped the service on my, my um, virtual machine. So do you have to turn in a screen like this to prove that it's configured correctly, but when it's, when you stop the service, you, you know, you know, you're actually pulling from the, no, you don't have to go through the extra hoops. I'm just presenting this additional information in case you need to troubleshoot to double check to make sure your system is actually using your own virtual machine. So you'd check here, you'd make sure it shows under details. Oh, what's the DNS server? 
one dot six. Everybody, does everybody see this? Yes. So my host laptop, the machine I'm using right now for this presentation is using my virtual machine. And this is the proof that it's using the virtual machine. It shows, so this is the other screenshot you could grab if you didn't wanna show the configuration, you could you could list it here and I'd say, say okay, that's a local machine. And from the previous, uh, previous right. detail you turned in, I know this is the dot six. Now, what do I do to unstick this? All I have to do with my server is start the service. Once the service is started, I can go back to my web browser. Let's pick a different, um, what's another domain name we can use? Hello? Um, Say again? YouTube. There it is. So YouTube comes up. So that's how I know that on my local machine, I'm using my running server, my virtual machine for DNS. So once you have a successful screen, you can open up a window, right? You can browse something and capture the screen and that, that shows you what's going on. Any questions about this? So for task number three, it says for the last task, capture a screenshot of the three steps, changing the IP settings, clearing the cache, browsing online content. And I think what we're going to add is um, actually, we've already got a picture of the IP address and the change the settings. So you're showing that it's working and, and your virtual machine is providing DNS. Now, you can, you can set up a virtual machine to run uh, with very modest hardware, uh, but there are other ways you can run DNS in your local network. You can use a Raspberry Pi and set up Pi Hole. Some of you, I'm pretty certain some of you in this class have access to a Raspberry Pi. And if you don't, I can tell you where to get one at the OEK campus. I can tell you if you're on St. Thomas who you should see to get a Raspberry Pi to try this with. On the Albert A. Sheen campus, I have kits. I can hand you a Raspberry Pi you can take home and set up. This is another way of logging the five points for your module two solution. Now, if you do both, I will double your credit. So you can set up a virtual machine, configure the DNS in a few steps like we just showed you. When you, when you think about it, the time that we're talking about here, it's, uh, it's about an hour or so of time. And then configure and do that. You can log full credit if you complete each of the three tasks but then you also have an alternate option to run DNS in your home network, on your home network. So if you already have a Raspberry Pi, great. If you need one, I can arrange for you to get one. This is due for March, 2023. That's a week from today. So you can pick up a Raspberry Pi on campus if you wanna do this instead and you don't wanna set up the virtual machine, you can do both if you wanna double your credit. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Raspberry Pi. So here you see, I opened up Microsoft Bing, but the same happens if you open up Google and you type in the word 
raspberry with a P. Sometimes people can't find it because of the spelling. Raspberry has a P in there. And, and then a separate word, pi, but then include the term pi dash whole. As soon as you see this, what you find are the necessary uh, resources to configure this thing. So it is a $35 computer that uh, you can run in your home and connect to your home network. And uh, basically you download the software from the raspberrypi.org website. And then when it comes to configuring it as a pie hole, you click the link for pie hole. And once your Raspberry Pi is working, you can, in, you can go to the, this website, pi-hole.net, and then scroll down to this option, install pie hole. And when you open a terminal on the Raspberry Pi, you want, you want to be able to issue each of these commands from the terminal. Now this needs to be a terminal that's opened with root privileges. So you're gonna, you're gonna end up entering the, the sudo command and, and then it's gonna prompt you, okay, enter the password that you use to set up this Raspberry Pi. You can manually download the installer and then run it yourself which is actually more stable and more secure. So you use this command. You can use either method to download and run uh, PyHole. The moment you start PyHole, essentially you're going to, so that's the second task of the, of the, the optional uh, solution. So the first task is to get your Raspberry Pi in place. Second task is to install the Pi Hole software using either method from the terminal prompt inside the Pi Hole. And then the last thing you do is you go to your Wi-Fi router and in the settings for your Wi-Fi router, you put the address of your Raspberry Pi. So once your Raspberry Pi is on the internet and it's talking and you install the Pi Hole software with either method, you have to go to your Wi-Fi router and tell your Wi-Fi router to use that, the IP address of the Raspberry Pi as their DNS server. So inside your, you can do this manually inside the DH server, inside your clients, right? So where do you do that inside? We just showed you. When I'm in here, I can go to properties, double click on the IPv4 version properties. Let's start over on my system or inside the Wi-Fi router. I can double click, go to properties, open up IPv4, and I can manually enter the IP address of the Raspberry Pi instead of putting my virtual machine. So your Raspberry Pi will pick up another address on your local network. And then you're gonna tell your laptop or your PC, instead of the virtual machine IP address, you're gonna insert the IP address for the Raspberry Pi. There are similar settings in a Wi-Fi router where you tell it, 
hey, as you're working your DHCP magic with all the connected network clients, you can insert that IP network address there and it's done automatically on all of your machines. Are there any questions about the module two solution? Um, no. Okay. You're, um, you're going to post this video right yes okay i'm going to post the video and it'll be lit up right here follow this youtube that's okay. what I'm, yep that's what i'm going to do right now okay that's it. so uh, i hope you have a pleasant weekend and thank you for joining same us to you. thank you same to you professor no bye-bye for now thank you all right bye